Back at the Liberty Bowl, you know, this is a very emotional game for the Air Force Academy. It's a big game, and if you look, the Air Force Academy, the cadets, are represented by 108 different units. Each of the units across the, around the world have a scarf that represents each of these cadets. The cadets are sponsored by the unit, and as you look at those scarves, those scarves are, represent the emblem of the unit that each cadet represents. Now there's a picture of each cadet with that unit, and they represent the entire Air Force Academy. Now these, I talked to some of the players before the game and in the last night, and these guys know people over in the Persian Gulf. The game is dedicated to get them a very emotional game for the Air Force. Thank you very much, Kevin. And now it's time for our national anthem with opera star Marguerite Piazza. Obviously a problem with the uh, Liberty Ball microphone down on the field, but the crowd picked it up well. The National Anthem on what is an emotional night for these two teams and for this game being dedicated to our armed forces. Here come the Buckeyes of Ohio State. John Cooper in his third year as head coach of the Buckeyes. And the Air Force Academy from Colorado Springs, Colorado. The kickoff coming up next. The Liberty Ball of 1990 from Memphis, Tennessee. The Ohio State Buckeyes and the Falcons of the Air Force Academy. Team captains out of the field for the coin toss. Ohio State in their home uniforms. And the Air Force Academy in solid white road uniforms with the uh, blue trim. Air Force Academy on the sidelines. The referee for tonight's ball game is James Knight conducting the coin toss. Ohio State won the toss, deferred its decision to the second half. Now the Air Force Academy given the options. John Cooper pacing on the sidelines. And there's Coach Fisher to Barry. Moments away from the start of this 32nd annual Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. <laughs> That's Jay Cook on the Ohio State sidelines with a message for his buddies. You know, Ben Bennett, these two teams, you mentioned it in the open, really, the 
the Air Force had to win their final game to get here. And Ohio State lost its final game, and this was more of a consolation prize for them. There's been a lot of talk back and forth about that over these last three, four weeks leading up to this Liberty Bowl game. But I think tonight, suffice to say, both teams will go out there. They put on the pads. They're out on the field. They're there to win. Well, there's a lot to it as you talk to the principals involved. The, the Liberty Bowl people and a lot of the media down here in Memphis thought that Ohio State was being very negative toward their bowl game because they said, hey, we want to go to the Rose Bowl. Well, obviously, you want to win your conference and you want to go to the best bowl game that you can, but they're not unhappy with being at the Liberty Bowl. But throughout the turn of events, the, mem the media down here has really jumped on the Air Force bandwagon, and it's kind of irritated the Ohio State Buckeyes. Both teams playing very local football tonight, but for very different reasons. Ohio State will kick to the Air Force to start the ball game. Tim Williams, freshman, out of Waynesville, Ohio. Seventh in Big Ten scoring, fourth in Big Ten kick scoring. Set a school record for single season point after touchdown percent. Jason Jones dropping back deep. Eric Faison on the near side. Jones on the far side are the deep backs for the Air Force Academy. Jones averaging 23 yards a return. Phase on 29 yards a return. Now we're just about set to get underway. Ohio State 7-3-1. Air Force 6-5 this season. And we're underway. Jason Jones from the nine into a crowd at the 25-yard line, maybe out to the 26, where it'll be first down for the Falcons. Brent Johnson made the stop on the play. Take a look at the lineup. Rob Perez and Rodney Lewis. Perez, the quarterback. Lewis, both have rushed for over 500 yards this season. Chris Howard is a Rhodes Scholar. The tailbacks, or the uh, halfbacks of this offense, are more blockers. Woods, the wide receiver. Mott is the tight end. The center, David Young, anchoring a small offensive line. First play from scrimmage. Howard to the outside was tripped up initially on the play by Jason Simmons and then the Buckeyes flow to the football led by Mark Bo Polini and Foster Falk on the corner completing the offensive line for the Air Force Ron James and Greg Berger small guards and then the tackles are quick Lebotsky and Maurer in the wishbone attack Rob Perez, a junior out of Atlanta, Georgia, came on this season in the Navy game, the quarterback. It is a second down. About nine yards to go. Rodney Lewis for a couple. Out to the 29-yard line. Let's take a look at the Buckeye defense. Up front, Greg Smith is a key at the nose tackle position. Leads the Big Ten in sacks. Foster and Frimmel, very active on the defensive ends. The outside linebackers, Simmons is a redshirt freshman. Lease and Tovar. Tovar led this team in tackles. And the cornerback spots good athletic ability in Park and Clark. And the safety's very productive Peel and Polini. It is third down, about eight yards to go. Rob Perez is short of a first down. Out across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Jay Cook made the stop, along with Derek Foster. So it's fourth down and a punting situation for the Air Force. Jason Chris, a junior from Bell Alton, Maryland, is on the punt. Second team all of WAC. Led the WAC in punting. Jeff Graham back deep. Leading Big Ten punt returner, third nationally for Ohio State, averaging 14 yards. The snap over the head of the putter in the end zone. He'll be decked for a safety. Jason Chris hit by Craig Griffey, who's the son of Ken Griffey, a baseball fame. And Ohio State is on the board, leading 2-0. I guess in baseball ease, that'll go down to the books as a two-run shot. Watch the snap. You can't even hardly see it in his screen. It went so far over his head. Chris really had nothing to do except to try to pick the ball up and avoid giving the ball 
to Ohio State in their own end zone to give them a touchdown or real close where they can score easily. He picks the ball up, and rather than do something foolish, he just goes down and gives them two rather than give them a shot at seven. And it should be pointed out, Ben Bennett, that Lou Yeager was on the snap. He was the deep snapper, and they're talking to him right there. David Evans is the regular big deep snapper for Fisher DeBerry's Air Force team, but he is out of this ball game. He underwent an appendectomy about a week ago. So, again, a crucial situation and a mistake on special teams, and the Air Force is trailing 2-0 and will punt the football to Ohio State again. It was a great snap. If he'd have been standing 25 yards back, boy, he hummed that thing. Nice tight spiral. Unfortunately, it went about five feet over his head. And this is one of the things that Air Force has to avoid doing. They know, both offensively and defensively, they have to play an error-free football game to hang in with Ohio State out of the Big Ten, not only because of the, the skill level that Ohio State has, but strictly because of the sheer size advantage that they possess. Well, the one thing Fisher DeBerry mentioned to us, we have to play on the lead or close to it. They're down 2 nothing here in the opening of three minutes of this football game. Jason Chris punting the football on the free kick. Taken by one of the upbacks, a fair catch signal made, and Kirk Herbstreit, who was a quarterback, uh, made that catch, and Ohio State will start near the 45. Here's what we're talking about, Ben, the size factor on the line offensively for Ohio State, as opposed to the defensive front the Air Force will put up against that front line. Well, Wayne, it's the old saying, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. In this case, I'll have to bet my money on the bigger dog. 60 pounds per man. Greg Fry has his team up to the line of scrimmage. On first down for the Buckeye, 45. Robert Smith. Gain of four, almost five yards. And Brian Hill made the stop on the play. Take a look at the offense for Ohio State. We talked about it. Greg Fry about to pass for 2,000 yards for three seasons in a row. Scotty Graham, a solid fullback. Smith, we've mentioned him. He's an outstanding tailback. Great talent. Bobby Olive, Jeff Graham, all Big Ten caliber receivers. And it's second down for Ohio State. About six yards to go. Bernard Edwards unable to hang on in the flat underneath the coverage of Shannon Yates. The rest of the offense for Ohio State. Tight end is Gary Likovich, although we'll see a lot of Jeff Ellis. Dan Beatty is the veteran center, all Big Ten. Peterson and Nichols at the guard spots. They are huge, both up over 290. Klein and Show play the tackle spot for Ohio State. Third down, Buckeyes. Six yards to go. The Air Force 40-yard line, McDonald forced him out. So Fry moves the chains on an 11-yard gain. When you look at the tandem on the outside, Air Force has got to cover two very good receivers. You see Olive dip in and come back outside. Fry puts the ball right on the money. And then Bobby Olive puts his shoulder on one of the Air Force coaches. First down, Buckeyes in enemy territory for the first time tonight. They lead 2-0 early going. Robert Smith behind a wall of Buckeyes, but piercing through J.T. Tokers, a senior out of Seattle, Washington, along with Brian Hill, the two very active inside linebackers. Take a look at the Air Force defense. Steve Brennan, a key on the nose of the defense up front. He'll make a lot of plays inside. Baker and Bean are very active defensive tackles. Lovelace and Simpson on the outside of the linebacking core. Tokish and Hill make an awful lot of tackles here tonight inside. Carlton McDonald, Eric Faison, good athletic ability on the corners. And the safety, Shannon Yates will flat out hit you. Eldrick Hill is a good cover man. Second down for the Buckeyes, about nine yards to go. Fry over the middle. He's got the big tight end, Gary Likovich. Brian Hill made the stop. We talked with Fisher DeBerry last night. 
Ben, he told us that what they'll try to do is roll up and try to take away the wide receivers and force Ohio State to go to a receiver that they're not that accustomed to going to, and that's the tight end. So when you say roll up, what you're talking about is the corners on the outside, instead of giving a cushion, coming up and bump and trying to force a deeper throw or to force them to throw to the middle to the tight end. It's a much lower percentage throw, but if it's complete, it's usually for bigger yardage. Gain of seven, and third down and two. Graham in motion. Smith. Oh, he was hammered in the hole. I don't think he got it. He got to the 31. Tokish and Shannon Yates. Yates coming in from the uh, secondary, Ben. Wayne, when we talk about the size difference, when you're giving up 58 pounds per man, you don't just roll over and die. You have to stunt some people. You have to move people into different gaps, and you have to take chances on blitzing your linebackers, bringing people out of the secondary. That's what Air Force did. They had 11 men up on the line, and they brought everybody up. The problems you run into when you do that is you have no second line of defense if somebody breaks through. It is fourth down, less than a yard. Ohio State with that big size advantage going for it. Fry got a bit of a late start, but did pick up the first down. They got a good surge off Dan Beatty up the middle. Brian Hill made the stop for the Air Force. First down for Ohio State, but not by much. Well, you mentioned that he got a little bit of a late start. That's designed in the play. What the quarterback needs to do is take the snap, give his lineman time to fire off, and if there is a stunt, it gives Fry just that half a second to decide to go right or left. Raymond Harris is in a tailback and jumping on sides. Chris Baker made contact with the neutral zone. This will be five yards for the Buckeyes, and it'll be first and five at the 25-yard line of the Air Force. Take a look at it from down low, Ben. James Knight, the referee, with the call. When you're, when you're little and you're up against somebody that size, you got to use everything to your advantage. Baker trying to get a jump on a snap count. He's eager to get across there and make something happen. That time he was five yards to the Air Force detriment too eager. Well, Cal McCombs, the defensive coordinator for Air Force, told us his kids have to get off the ball. They must get off the ball quick. Fry, short drop. Nearly picked off, knocked away by Clifton Lovelace, the 6'4 senior out of Danville, Illinois. Man, had he been able to haul that one down, he had a lot of green in front of him. Yeah. Well, I tell you, the thing that Air Force is doing that I, I really like on their defensive scheme so far is their secondary coverage is confusing Fry. They're showing a four deep look and then either rolling up. You see just a little bit of hesitation because Fry wasn't exactly sure what the wideouts were doing. Lovelace gets his hand on the football, but in that four deep set, they can either move to two deep or three deep. Very difficult to pick up. Raymond Harris. Eldrick Hill came in from the secondary to put a hit on him. Brian Hill put his hand on the tackle as well. Third down for Ohio State, gain of three on the play, two yards to go. Well, Robert Smith is definitely an outstanding freshman. This fellow right here, Raymond Harris, also a freshman at 6'2", 220. This is the type of player in the backfield that has the power to run the football effectively up inside, but he also has the blazing speed should he need to bounce it outside, he can break the long one. Three freshmen tailbacks have accounted for 84% of Ohio State's rushing offense this year. Third down and two. Harris going wide, gets a block from Scotty Graham, and it looks like he is short of the first down. Boy, I tell you, Hill got out in front of that play, along with Gates and Baker. They flow to the football well. Watch the size of the players running out against the Air Force players. But do you think they're thinking right now, geez, I'm outweighed by 58 pounds? No, these guys are getting after the football. The one thing you can count on when you play an academy is that they're going to be disciplined and they're going to be aggressive. Look at Brian Hill, the 5'11", 210-pound senior. He's going to give up his body, do whatever he has to do to win the football game. Second, fourth down call for Ohio State on this drive. Fourth and one. Oh, Harris! his way for the first down inside the 20 to the 18 yard line. Eldrick Hill the free safety, Brian Hill the inside linebacker, team up on the stop, Brian Hill, his father is uh, the Ohio State trainer. So family affair down here in Memphis 
for those two. And you see Raymond Harris trotting off to the sidelines. You saw the determination as he busted up into the line. Remember, as you watch this guy tonight, he's going to have knee surgery tomorrow. Scotty Graham can't get away from Lane Bean and Rod Steffen. They bring him down after a gain of maybe two yards to the 16. Mr. DeBerry looking out of the sideline. Well, he sure was a delight to talk to yesterday. You, you get to talk to some coaches, and they get very involved in the X's and O's of the game. But this is a guy that's genuinely excited to be where he is at the academy, and he loves the kids that he's got playing for him. I'm sure to a certain degree every coach does, but this guy really bubbles over when you talk to him about it. Ohio State facing a second and eight. 16-yard line of the Air Force. Robert Smith. Forced out of bounds by Hill and Tokish. We are going to say, Ben Bennett, Hill and Tokish a lot here tonight. <laughs> well, put it this way, had we been covering him the last three years, we would have called their names 535 times. Whoa, between, nice between the two of these in the last three years, they have accounted for 535 total tackles. These are some fellas that can play some football. Gain of three on that play. Now from the 13-yard line of the Air Force, it is third and five for Ohio State. Smith didn't get the first down, didn't come close. Chris Baker made the stop on the play. Let's get out of the sideline. Hey, Kevin Guthrie. Kevin? You know, down on this end of the field, it's much wetter than on the other end of the field. In the pregame, both teams working out on either end of the end zone. This side of the field, much heavier, much muddier, much more difficult. So Ohio State trying to pump it in with a run. It's going to be tough in the mud. Ben? Wayne? On fourth down, Tim Williams coming on to try a field goal. This will be about a 28-yard field goal attempt. Inside the 30, Williams is 5 of 7. 12 of 15 field goals overall with a long of 52. Out of the hole to Kirk Herbstreit. And Ohio State increases the advantage with 6 0 to go. First period of play, 5 0. Buckeyes over the Falcons. A special holiday kickoff of ESPN's Bowl Week, the 32nd Annual Liberty Bowl Football Classic, is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. With that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a Bud. And by Federal Express. For documents, packages, and freight worldwide, Federal Express is absolutely, positively the best in the business. Wayne Larrabee with Ben Bennett, Kevin Guthrie. We wish you the best of the holiday season as we begin bowl week here on ESPN. Ohio State leading the Air Force 5-0. We're the 32nd annual Liberty Bowl at Memphis, Tennessee. Buckeyes will be kicking to the Air Force. That was a good stand for Air Force. Ohio State took the football on the Buckeye 45, moved inside the 15, but had to settle for a field goal. And, you know, Kevin mentioned the footing on that side of the field uh, may have bogged them down on that third down and five yards to go call. Robert Smith got three, but didn't get enough. Well, you saw when Kevin reached down and squished the turf. It is soft. And if you look at the turf behind the kicker, you can see it's coming up in big chunks. The footing is important for the lineman as well as the running back. Twin safeties back deep. Jason Jones, Eric Faison. Now the ball falls off the knee for Tim Williams. As you watch these two kickers tonight, the, both the punters and the place kickers, you'll say to yourself, well, the ball sure isn't traveling very far. That's because it's so cold. When, the, when it gets this cold, those footballs are like kicking bricks yeah, or a rock. You know, I mean, really. I feel for the barefoot kickers. Both these kickers wear shoes. Yeah, those guys ought to be beaten in Yeah, right. <laughs> they don't know better. Jason Jones. <laughs> Struggling to the 29-yard line. About a 19-yard return. Let's get out of Kevin on the sideline. Kevin? Thanks, Wayne. You guys, you guys remember Charlie Finley, the owner of the Oakland A's. You know, he tried to get the major leagues to use a fluorescent baseball. He's always inventing, always innovating. His latest invention is a football. It's called the double grip football. And instead of having pebbles that protrude from the ball, it has a dimpled surface, like a golf ball. It's not as deep. It's supposed to grip better. It's supposed to throw better. Air Force is using it. They swear by it, think it's a better football. Back to you. Ben and Wayne? 
All right, it may be a better ball. I know Michigan uses it as well. Perez. Good yardage out across the 35. He lost the football, but the play had been whistled dead. That's a gain of almost six yards. And so, good production on first down. Very important for a wishbone team, Ben, to keep on schedule. The big look thing, at Perez work. The big thing in the wishbone is you have to make good decisions and you have to make clean execution. You don't want to put the football on the ground. Perez is a true option quarterback. He ran the option in high school, and one of his strengths is that he reads well on the option. Second down at about four. Stuff back as the fullback. Jason Jones, not a whole lot there. Smith and Tovar on the stop, along with Jason Simmons. The key to stopping the wishbone, or at least starting to stop it, is to stunt somebody inside and to stop the fullback. Look at the center, being held up by the nose guard. He took care of two people. It's illegal what he did, but he's trying to keep the center off of the linebacker and to stop the fullback at the same time. That's a great shot by our camera crew. I gained about four yards on that play. First down to the 40-yard line for Air Force. essentially back to the line of scrimmage. Brimmel and Paul on the stop. Take a look at the uh, pursuit on this play. Tovar was in the backfield to disturb the play. Well, it's not bad enough that you have to contend with, with going against the, the wishbone, but you can never get a real good look in practice because you don't have guys that can execute. So far, Ohio State showing no ill effects from that problem. Second down and 10 yards to go. to the 48-yard line on a gain of eight yards. Jay Cook, the outside linebacker, a senior from Cincinnati, the Reed linebacker, they say, in the Ohio State defense made the stop. Ohio State leading 5-0. We are first period of play, a little over four minutes to go first quarter. Third down, and it's a long two for the Air Force. Good place for a pass. Just kidding. <laughs> Perez gets the first down. Perez is 6'1 and 182, and he bowled his way past Cook and Bellini to pick up that first down at the midfield marker. Or so it appeared to my <laughs> wondering eyes. The officials apparently are going to call for the chain, or are they? No, it's going, it's moving back. This is a shoot yourself in the foot type penalty. Yep. Dan Zedroik leading out through a forearm up underneath the, the chin of one of the Ohio State players, and he did it right in front of a referee. Fisher DeBerry showing his uh, displeasure as it will. We have a dead ball foul against the offense. Personal foul. Happened after the play. They mark it from the spot of the uh, play, from where the play ended at the 50-yard line, 15 yards back, moves it to the 35, and puts Air Force third down and long. And we talked at the top, and I said right before that play, good place for a pass. Realize not only have they not thrown a, a touchdown pass all season, They've only thrown for 396 yards on the season. This is not the position they, they want to be in. I beg your pardon. It is first and 25 because the penalty took place after the play. They gained the first down and now are penalized. Perez wanted to pass or so it appeared and got back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a half yard. Ken Coleman nailed him on the play. Long yardage is not something that the wishbone normally contends with anyhow. But at least if you throw the football somewhat efficiently, you have a shot to pick up some yardage. Perez never wanted to throw that football. It was a designed pass, but he never even brought his hands together like he was going to throw it. He was looking to run the football all the way. Second down and 25 for the Air Force Academy. Perez 
nailed immediately. It looked like some irregular movement along the offensive line, but I do not see any penalty markers down. Well, David Young did something that he's been coached to do, but he did it a half a count too late. They went with the hard count. Greg Smith jumped into the neutral zone. David Young, just a half second late, tried to catch him in the neutral zone and snapped it. Unfortunately, by the time he had realized it and snapped the football, Smith had gotten back out of the neutral zone. Rob Perez was left holding the bag. So, strange looking play because no one else on the offensive line moved because, again, the snap was early. Well, that's what they're trying. They're told to do that. With the guys in the zone, get the ball to him. He was just a half second late doing it. Third and long. Jason Jones for about six yards. Coleman and Smith on the stop. He needed a whole lot more than six yards. It is fourth and 19 for the Air Force Academy. Jason Chris comes out. And going back to the early snap, Wayne, great centers will do that instinctively. And I've been lucky in my college career and a pro career, I've had two stellar centers that just do that out of habit. If somebody even gets close, the ball's up there, and we're on we the We have move. an illegal shift against the offense. Declined, fourth down. Another penalty down to the play. And penalty declined by Ohio State. They'll take the football. There is Jeff Graham back deep. Jason Chris probably has a few butterflies wondering where the snap's going to go right about now. Decent snap. Gets off a line drive kick. Well covered. And is down near the 18-yard line of Ohio State. Buckeyes with 137 to go in the first on top. Fisher DeBerry just finished up talking with his offense that, hey, we need some second effort, guys. You need to execute this offense. We've got to keep our defense off the field. And uh, a penalty. Personal foul following a first down run. Backed up the Air Force to first and 25. They were unable to successfully get themselves out of that predicament. As a result, the punt gives Ohio State the football just short of the Buckeye 19 on first down. Greg Fry. Bobby Alvo. Pickup of about six, maybe seven. Eric Faison, the weak corner, has the coverage. Chris James was back there with the fry on the play. Coming up, NCAA basketball, number 16, Georgia. Georgetown against Houston. Tell you what, everything came together for Houston last year after a couple of mediocre seasons. Pat Foster again have to reestablish his team's chemistry. And John Thompson at Georgetown. I tell you, they've got the big men up front. Should be a good one Saturday on ESPN. Second down. Smith. He got maybe a yard at best. Robert, or Brian Hill made the stop on Robert Smith. I'll tell you what, Air Force has flowed to the football well. Ben. They really have the ground. They pursued. They've got to get a lot of bodies around the football. They're starting to walk secondary people up in, and the secondary people are getting involved in the running game. What that sets Air Force up for is the play fake and one of the fine receivers, either Oliver Graham, going deep. Ohio State is not afraid to go to that. Raymond Harris rolls to the first down out of the 30-yard line. J.T. Tokish made the stop. Gain of four. Wait, one of the things that we're seeing, and it's a subtle thing, and, and if you're not paying attention, you don't really notice it. But yesterday, John Cooper says, hey, we want to get in and out of the huddle. We want to dictate the pace. We don't want to get up to the line and do a bunch of jumping around. We want to get up, and we want to run the football. They're doing that right now. They're running probably on a better pace to run more plays now than they have in any game this season. First and ten. Final 30 seconds. First period. Air Force in a blitz. Try. Taken down on the play by Chris James, the sophomore from San Antonio, Texas. They were coming with Eldrick Hill, the free safety in the slot that time. Cal McComb said yesterday, the defensive coordinator for Air Force, we've got to take some chances on some blitzes. Fry is one of the best play-action passers in the country. He's just very, very deceptive. 
But in that case, they just blitzed. They didn't worry about deception. Loss of 12. It'll be second and 22 when we come back to start the second period of play. Ohio State leads it 5 0 after one. Wayne Larravee, Ben Bennett, Kevin Guthrie at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. 5-0 Ohio State Buckeyes have the football second and 22 as we begin the second period of play. Brett Fry. Over the middle to the big tight end once again. Right Jeff Ellis on the reception, Tokish and Hill team up on the stop. That's the second pass that a tight end has caught here tonight. And this is what Cal McCombs said, hey, we're going to try and make Ohio State throw the football to their tight end. They haven't done it a bunch all year. You see Fry was looking outside for Jeff Graham. When Graham wasn't open, he came back inside and threw it to his big tight end, Ellis. Ellis, the son of former world heavyweight boxing champ Jimmy Ellis, underwent major reconstructive knee surgery at the end of last year and it's taken him all of this year to really get back into it and he hasn't been able to make 100% recovery yet. Third down now for Fry. Lots of time. I believe he was going for Robert Smith or perhaps in the deep pattern Jeff Ellis. Ryan Hill had the coverage downfield. Fry was looking for a pass interference call. Robert Smith was getting jammed all the way down the field. By the time he came off the jam, Fry had already thrown the football. He's complaining that Smith really didn't have a chance to turn his head and look at it. Jeff Bowman on a punt formation. And, and you know whose side I'm going to have to be on in that argument. <laughs> Is there any doubt for QB? Bobby Thomas averaging 6.5 yards per return. Don't be surprised if Air Force goes to the block here. Fourth and 15 of the Ohio State 25. A high but short kick. Thomas must it. Up for grabs. Buckeye football. 46-yard line of Ohio State. Vinnie Clark makes the recovery. Ben, that ball came down almost like a knuckleball. Well, he's kicking the football, and I told you how cold it is. It came, it wasn't spiraling, it wasn't going end over end. It's a very difficult catch to make, especially on the dead run. Watch the ball come down. He puts his hands up instead of down to cradle the football. It hits his forearms and bounces off. No big surprise that Vinnie Clark comes up with the recovery. He's recovered three fumbles on the year. That's now his fourth. Bobby Thomas tried to make a catch like a center fielder, and obviously that's not the technique you use when catching the football. He catches thumbs out and not thumbs in. First down, Buckeyes just across the 45. Robert Smith spinning to the 49 of the Air Force on a gain of about five yards. Virgil Simpson made the stop. Make that Butler Benote on the carry. Boy, we heard Fisher DeBerry earlier saying we've got to keep our defense off the field. We've talked about the size disadvantage, and we've talked about the rapidity of the offense. All of this lends to wear down your team in the second half. 60 pounds is a lot of poundage to give away play after play. Second down. Benote. Got a first down to the 43-yard line. Baker and Hill made the stop. William Houston, a redshirt freshman, is in at the fullback position. He's 6'1 and about 250. And he was the lead blocker on that play for Butler Benote. And, and let me tell you something. If this were New Jersey, they wouldn't sanction this fight. <laughs> From the 43. How about they sanctioned everything in Jersey? <laughs> Benote again. This time the cadets flow quickly to the football. Chris Baker and Lane Bean team up on the stop. Bean made the game-winning or game-saving tackle at Texas El Paso in the final weekend of the regular season. And Bean and J.T. Tokish teamed yep. up, came through on a blitz, and stopped the two-point conversion. Probably the biggest play at Air Force in a long time. They were excited, genuinely ecstatic, to have the opportunity to come back to the Liberty Bowl. Take a look at what Ohio State has done in the second period. Second quarter, Ohio State scored 113. Their opponents in the first half, entire first half, have scored 113 points this season. So the second quarter is a big one for the Buckeyes. The blitz was coming. Whistles hold up the action. Penalty markers down, and there was no question right from the start. 
they held up this play maybe for the uh, too much time on the delay of game on the Buckeyes dead ball foul delay offense what causes the delay Air Force is bouncing around they're using the disguise coverages that I told you about Fry saw what he wanted, but by the time he had audible to the fade pattern, it was too late. The game clock had run out. Air Force is moving around. They're giving Fry a lot of different looks and never the same look twice in a row. One of the looks that he is seeing is that the cornerbacks are stepping up man-to-man -man on inside coverage. That's the pattern that he will try to throw to against that particular coverage. Second and 15 now, back at the 48 of Air Force for the Buckeyes. Fry off play action. Bobby Olive. To the Air Force, 21-yard line. Shannon Yates literally threw him down to the play. He broke the tackle attempt of Eldrick Hill up near the 30. This is what Greg Fry has done so well throughout his entire career. Watch the play fake. Okay, so what does the play fake do? It completely eliminates any coverage from the inside and the outside linebackers. Look at the shot right on the money to Bobby Olive, who's in man-to-man -man coverage, breaks one tackle, and he's a he's a, a squeezing fist full of jersey away from breaking another one. Benote, written down by Carlton McDonald. 27 yards on that previous play to set up a first down to the 21-yard line of the Air Force for Ohio State. And now, nice pickup on first down for the Buckeyes. A gain of four yards leaves a second at six. You get the feeling that the heavyweight boxer is starting to find the range against the counterpuncher. Second down, Ohio State. Inside the Air Force 20 once again. Benote stacked up this time. Lane Bean was there. JT Tokush, of course, on the bottom of that file. Also putting a hat on the play, Ryan Hill. Down at this end of the field, it's interesting in that the team from the WAC Conference, Air Force, plays so many great passing teams, they will lay off and do what a lot of people don't do, and that's to play a zone all the way back. Once teams are used to getting blitzed down here and getting man coverage, most of their pass patterns are designed to go against man coverage. They are not effective against the zone defense. One thing that is, though, is running the football effectively, which Ohio State does well. Third down for Fry. Blitz. Well done by the Air Force. Virgil Simpson, the outside linebacker. Chris Baker, the left tackle. Loss of about 10 yards, and it's field goal time once again for the Buckeyes. This same thing happened earlier. Fry dropping back to pass. Air Force taking a big gamble and bringing the, everything but the kitchen sink. Linebackers and one secondary guy. The one guy that's not accounted for is the quarterback. His man is the one that normally breaks through and makes the sack like he did right there. Williams with about a 43-yard field goal attempt. He is two of two inside this range. This kick is going to be short and off to the right. So we've got a break of the action with 9.29 to go. The Air Force holding steady. Our special holiday kickoff of ESPN Bowl Week, the 32nd Annual Liberty Bowl Football Classic, brought to you by Volkswagen. Say the word Farfic Nugent. It's what makes a car a Volkswagen. And by the Marines, the few, the proud, the Marines. This game dedicated to the men and women serving in our armed forces in the Persian Gulf. And of course, we're delighted that they are part of our viewing audience here tonight. We know it's what, early morning over in the Saudi Arabia. Uh, I don't know what time it is, but I know it's hot. Air Force trailing just 5-0 in the second period of play. Rob Perez does a good job with the play fake out of that wishbone. And he picks up about four yards. Derek Foster, the defensive end, playing in place of Alonzo Spellman. Spellman is an outstanding sophomore defensive end, and he... Uh, 
due to rules violations within the football team uh, and disciplinary reasons, did not make the trip with Ohio State down here to the Liberty Bowl. Second down now for Fisher to Barry's club. Rodney Lewis didn't have a, much of a chance there. He was hit right away as he got the football by Greg Smith. Let's get down to the sidelines of Kevin Guthrie. Kevin? Thanks, Wayne. Being on both of these sidelines, I'm struck by the difference in the emotional factors. You know, Ohio State is very confident, very business-like. Even on that drive down the field before the field goal, very business-like, not getting way up. Air Force, on the other hand, you know, when the field goal missed, they were going nuts. A big play for Air Force could change this ballgame around, but I think Ohio State's going to be tough to rattle. Ben and Wayne? No question, Kevin. This is a key third down. They have to keep the football. They must rest that defense a little bit. That defense has been on the field most of this first half. And Rodney Lewis, I believe, is short of the first down at the 35-yard line. He got two, not three yards. Well, to back up your point, Wayne, the play distribution so far, Ohio State run 27 plays to Air Force's 15. So it is fourth down. That's how much they have to go to make the first down. And they're calling for the chain, so apparently close enough for a measurement. What? It is cool here in Memphis, Tennessee. You're being oh so kind. Boy, they got a good, generous spot of the ball. And yet they are maybe a foot short of that first down, Ben. Big, Again, call, big call right here for Fisher to bury. You've got a yard to go, but you're deep in your own territory. Early in the game, and you're down by five. And you've got to rest that defense. Fisher to bury talked about that the last time his offense came to the bench. They are going for it. Fourth down, less than a yard. 35-yard line of the Air Force. Ohio State leading 5-0 second period. Quarterback sneak, yes, first down. Rob Perez picks up a very important first down for the Air Force, and again, they must get something going offensively with 7.38 to go in the half. Well, Rob Perez gets the glory here, but credit the offensive line of Lobotsky, James, Young, Berger, and Maurer. Look at the surge they got off the line. Perez says, hey, all I gotta do is follow you fellas, and we'll pick up the first. Perez, the junior, out of Atlanta. On a first down now, the 38-yard line. Rodney Lewis, out to the 46-yard line. Jimmy Peel, the second leading tackler, and Steve Tovar, the leading tackler for Ohio State, team up on the stop. This is a pulling guard. They get the option to the fullback, and instead of up the middle, Lewis takes the handoff, and it's a designed play for him to break to the outside. We told you the fullback carried the brunt of this offense, 40% of the offense, over 1,000 yards, and 10 touchdowns between the two fullbacks. Gain of eight on that play, second and two for Perez and company. play hit 38 yards overall this season air force has a first down and a timeout called on the field taken by the air force 605 left to go first half falcons undersized hanging in tight full week continues here on espn tomorrow night north carolina state southern miss and byu and texas a and and a good one on new year's day michigan and old miss First down for Air Force, Rodney Lewis breaking through inside the 20, down to about the 16-yard line, gain of five. Tom Lee, the strong side linebacker, made the stop. And Wayne, it's important to mention, now that Air Force is inside the 20, they've been inside the 20 this season 34 times and have scored 31. They've come away with 24 touchdowns and seven field goals. They're very efficient. They're going to need it tonight. Deepest penetration of the night for the Air Force. They have not thrown a pass in the football game yet. Again, the 
down on the far side. That's coming back. It's going against Air Force, and I think it's going to be a hold on their wide receiver. Fisher to Barry looking on with great concern. A couple of penalties tonight, Ben, in this first half of play have, have hurt his offense. There's the call from James Knight, the referee. The wide receiver out in front of the play. He'll come in at the very end. You see the fake and the pitch. Look at the top of your screen right there. Yep, there it is. The clip was committed against Vinnie Clark, Ben, and Vinnie still made the stop. See, that's no big surprise. This is a fella that's all over the football field. 51 tackles, led the Big Ten in interceptions with six. He now has four fumbles recovered on the season. He led the Big Ten in that category. He also blocked kicks. This is a guy that does everything on one side of the football. We mentioned this a few moments ago. Look what Air Force does when they have first and goal. They had first and goal a moment ago. It is still first and goal, but as a result of the penalty, they're out of the 22 instead of down to the eight-yard line. Rocky Lewis into a crowd, still fighting his way inside the 20 to the 16-yard line, gain of six yards. Rich Frimmel, the defensive tackle of Tom Leach, the strong linebacker on the stop. How big are the mistakes so far for Air Force? Well, the first sustained drive they had, they got a first down, got inside of Ohio State's territory, and they had a personal foul. Took them out of range, they never recovered. They get down, they've got first and goal, they get a silly clipping penalty. Now they're back outside of their own 15 with second and goal. They've got a long way to go. Second and goal from the 16 of the Buckeyes. Perez. On the reverse. Jason Crumble. Denied the end zone at the one-yard line. Vinny Clark and Mark Polini team up on the stop. Crandall, the senior from Garden City, Michigan, his sixth rushing attempt of the season. And why do you think Crandall is so happy? Not because he got down this low. He was the one that committed the clip. You can see number 51. Mark Williams was not fooled, but he went for the fake. Crandall using his superior quickness to get outside. He almost puts this thing into the end zone. Third down, goal to go inside the one. to Barry wants a timeout. Timeout taken by the Air Force. They're going to think about that two-point conversion. We have a break of the action. 3.47 to go. First half. Falcons on top. Fisher to Barry decides to go for two. Why? Because if you kick the extra point, you only go up by two, and it makes the field goal win the game if it comes down to it. Air Force 2 of 9 on two-point conversion attempt. Perez. Williams responds for Ohio State and stops the quarterback short of the end zone of the two-point conversion. 
nonetheless an impressive 11 play 74 yard drive for the air force and the cadets have a one point lead following that failed two-point conversion fisher to bury and his quarterback rob perez well, i think the discussion is not over the execution of the play but the actual play called I don't think they were they were happy with the execution and the play called, but you know, at the end of a discussion, he says, hey, even if you never run another race, you're still more. <laughs> he will run again tonight, I guarantee it, if he's healthy. There they are on the sideline. Perez talking with the offensive people up on the press box, and it's the quarterback's job in any situation in the wishbone to put his team in the right play once he gets to the line. That may be the big discussion right there. Joe Wood on the kick. Taken by Kirk Herbstreit. The up back at the 20. To the 30. Herbstreit is a former option quarterback. And he's out across the 35. Eldrick Hill and Rod Steffen teamed up on the stuff. Interesting story about number four, Kirk Herbstreit. The up back who returned that kickoff. He's a third-string quarterback, but he was an option quarterback in high school. He played a key role in preparing Ohio State's defense for this game. He ran the scout team and ran the wishbone offense for the past three weeks as Ohio State got ready. And as you talk to the coaches, they said, you know, especially Bill Young, the defensive coordinator from Ohio State, he said he did a fantastic job. But the problem that we had was we didn't have the running backs with the speed. We had to use walk-on wide receivers and running backs. Well, you can't have it all in practice, Coach. 36. First down. Right. Jeff Flynn. McDonald and Stephan on the stop following a gain of almost four yards. And to follow up that little story about not having the back with the speed to run it, why not? Because they have six backs that they play in the rotation. They have three freshman tailbacks and Dante Lee, who's a sophomore, to go along with Scotty Graham and the rest of the crew. Those guys practice with the number one oak. Second and six. Fire off play action. Robert Smith. Got the first down, out to the midfield markers. Bill Price, the inside linebacker, makes the stop after a 10-yard game. I'm impressed so far with the corners. Eric Faison and Carlton McDonald on the coverage on the outside. You see the play, Blake. Fry is looking outside, runs out of time, so he hits the safety valve. It was Robert Smith. Most of the completions for Ohio State in the passing game tonight have come over the middle. And have come corners. And have come to the back and to the tight end. that we call the name of Brian Hill. The market of the 41, loss of nine. Second and 19. Fry under pressure from Stephen, slips and falls, gets his pass away. Robert Smith battles back to the midfield marker or thereabouts. Carlton McDonald who made the stop downfield along with Bill Price, but it was Rod Stephen who was in on the quarterback right away. Minute 31 left to go, first half. Fry heads to the sideline to talk with Cooper. He's trailing by one. We talked earlier about the games and the stunt that the defensive line from Air Force would do. This is a classic stunt. Watch to the right of your screen, just to the right of the goalpost, number 71. Loop down inside with nobody blocking him. Watch the effort by Fry to duck the rush have the presence of mind to know where his receiver was. And watch this, Robert Smith picks up the ball off his ankle, regains his bounce, and look at the effort to get up. Those are three superior efforts there by three different players. Third and 11. Fry off 
play action again. Hit as he tried to throw to Olive. Lane Bean rushing the quarterback. Got a piece of him. Lane Bean is all over the quarterback. He's the one that earlier broke up the reverse. Now he's all over Fry. Even with the 58-pound difference, look at how often the Air Force defensive line is getting back to Fry. On play action, Fry's looking downfield. You see him turn his head all the way back and come off of Robert Smith. Robert Smith was running up the sidelines. He came off of him to go to Olive. By the time he had gone through his progression, it was too late. Air Force was on top of him. Bowman gets a high snap, but does get his kick away. End over end. Thomas, the fair catch signal, and he makes it near the 20-yard line where Air Force will take over. Well, Ben Bennett, people will ask you, how can the smaller cadets break through the offensive line so consistently? Is it because of the movement they show before the play? It's exactly what we talked about. This is a young, it's a big, but very young Ohio State offensive line. We talked about how Air Force was going to have to move around and play games on the inside. They are confusing the Ohio State protection right now. That's why they're getting the fry. They're also using their linebackers on blitz, and they're just skewing the play face. First down for the Air Force, just to that 20-yard line. Jason Jones into a red wall. Of Buckeye defenders led by Rich Fremmel, the junior. I Coming think. up at halftime, students in the sky. With Jimmy Roberts report from the Persian Gulf. And we've got also Lee Greenwood with God Bless the USA, the halftime show here at the Liberty Bowl. It'll be a good one. If you're Air Force right now, you're happy to go in with a one point lead. Jason Jones fighting his way out near the 25. Jay Cook, Derek Foster turn him back. And it is a third down and about five yards to go coming up for the Air Force. Well, Wayne, we wondered aloud between ourselves whether Ohio State, knowing the size advantage, knowing they played the Big Ten schedule, whether they would be complacent coming into this game. We asked Coach Cooper about it. He says, no, we're a little irritated. I think we're really going to come out and play some football. But you have to realize in the back of the Ohio State minds, they've got to know the differences. And they have to think Air Force doesn't belong in the same field with us. This happened back in 1981 to another highly regarded Ohio State team with Art Fleischer at quarterback. They came down and they played a Navy team that they didn't really feel should even be in the same stadium with them. They were lucky to sneak out with a 31-28 victory. John Cooper had a defense over on the sideline just a moment ago, as you may have seen. And there's Rob Perez. Rob Perez, we ought to mention, as a starter, his very first start, uh, lucky enough for him, was against Notre Dame. He's 3-2 and two as a starter. His only two losses have come to nationally, nationally ranked Brigham Young and Notre Dame. Third and five for the Air Force. Jason Jones, first down and more. My goodness, outstanding job by David T. Young and Greg Berger and Ron James, the interior portion of the offensive line to blow open that hole. First down, Bellini and Tovar made the stop after an 11-yard gain. This is some of the misdirection that the Air Force was talking about. They front out like they're going to go front side and then swing the option back this way. The linebackers take a step or two to the strong side, and when by that time, the offensive line has gotten a chance to get back down and get into position to block them. Gain of yardage up to about the 40-yard line, and Dan Detroit, the ball carrier, as time winds down in this first half of play. Well, if you're rooting for the Air Force, you have to feel pretty good. Not only have the Falcons hung in there with the Buckeyes, but in fact, they own a one-point lead as they head to the locker room. Impressive first half defensively for the Air Force. And for Ohio State, somewhat disappointing. Maybe this first half will serve as a wake-up call to the Buckeyes. They're in a football game now. Let's get out of the field now. Kevin Guthrie with Coach Fisher DeBerry of the Air Force. Kevin, great Coach DeBerry. You came in big on the dog. Now you got a one-point lead. What do you emphasize in the locker room going in? I'll tell you one thing. We don't improve our kicking game. We're going to be in doggone serious trouble. That's 
poor job as we've done in the kick game. We've given them all the dead going point. We snap the ball over the, over the kicker's head. Then we get a short punt. We give them great field position. And our defense, I think, is just doing a tremendous job. We've got to come back out in the second half, and we've got to control the football and have some sustained drive by. We haven't had the ball in We've got to control the football. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Kevin. Coming up, Tim Brando and Lee Corso. When we return, bowl week on ESPN, the Air Force by one. As you watch the second half, the Buckeyes are trying to be the second team from Columbus to win tonight. They are still 9-0. Randy Ayersine pulls it out against an improved Mississippi State team tonight, 82-80. to Let's get back to Wayne and company. Gentlemen. All right, thank you very much, Tim Brando. Wayne Larrabee with Ben Bennett. And Kevin Guthrie down to the sideline. Elvis Dean playing nose tackle. But for which side? Take a look at this. Things began in ominous fashion for Air Force early first period. This play was designed by Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey. The <laughs> snap five feet over his head. Chris really has nothing to do. Makes a smart play by going down. It cost him two points instead of seven. This is what has frustrated Ohio State all afternoon. They've been trying to use play action to bring the linebackers up, but on this play, Air Force had blitzed the linebackers. They didn't go for the fake. They have held Ohio State to 13 yards rushing because of plays like this. This is the play that broke it open in the first half. Onaha, Obasi Onaha gets the counter underneath and then just uses sheer determination. It takes a whole pass full of red folks to bring him down. This is the only touchdown of the game. The fake inside, Perez lowers his head and gets into the end zone. Obviously a motion riding high for the Air Force here in that first half. Quickly take a look at the stats of that first half of play. Passing yard to Air Force did not attempt to pass. Rushing yard for Ohio State only 13 because they had two big stacks that took yardage off the board in that category one turnover for the Air Force and you heard Mr. DeBerry talking it before they went in at halftime he says shoot we've given them all the points they gave it to him on that bad snap they gave it to him on a 29 yard punt he was trying to tell his troops at halftime hey fellas if we just play air free football which is what he told them before the game he says we can take this thing home Joe Wood getting set to kick it off. Ohio State has elected to receive to begin the second half of play. They won the coin toss originally, deferred their decision to the second half. They want to receive the football. I got a figure they're going to go right after the Air Force with power. Pretty good figure there, Wayne. High out on the limb, Ben. Not much. <laughs> to about the 27 yard line Teddy Dornbush made the stop on the play he's a fine baseball player was a pitcher and center fielder in high school was drafted by both the Cubs and Pirates at one time during his high school career well to echo your point Wayne when you went so far out of the limb just to make your <laughs> prediction Greg, uh, Greg Fry has been confused so far with the coverages and he's tried to do too much I have a feeling coach Cooper's just going to tell fellas look we're going to play some smash mouth football if they beat us they beat us Smith is the tailback at 12 yards in the first half of play. Here comes Robert Smith. Hill responds from the linebacking core. Got support from the secondary as well. And it's a gain of about three yards. Second down of coming for Ohio State. Chris Baker was also there. Take a look at the possession chart for Ohio State in the first half of play. Their first drive, 44 yards to a field goal. That followed a free kick following a safety. Now, Ohio State punts and missed field goal and then a punt. Didn't pick up much yardage on their next three possessions. Matter of fact, you could combine the yardage they gained on their next three possessions, and it didn't equal what they got on their first. Well, Wayne, interesting to, to point out here, Robert Smith, 15-yard carrying so far in this half, he had well over 1,000 yards rushing against Big Ten competition, some of the staunchest defenses in the country. Second down. was also there and Wayne to further accentuate how amazing this is and I use the, the, the phrase thus far is that Air Force plays in the WAC conference they 
play in a conference where it's not uncommon to have a team throw for 500 yards. Air Force held its opponent to 1,383 yards rushing in 11 games at 3.1 yards per carry. Not bad. Run defense, third down for Fry. holiday kickoff of ESPN's Bowl Week, the 32nd Annual Liberty Bowl Football Classic, is brought to you by Federal Express. For documents, packages, and freight worldwide, Federal Express is absolutely, positively the best in the business. And by AFLAC, insuring over 35 million people worldwide. Rodney Lewis on the first carry from scrimmage for Air Force. Offensively in the second half gets about three yards, leaving a second down and seven yards to go coming up. You have to wonder at this point, Wayne, Air Force has not thrown a pass. They, they almost look like they attempted one. When will Ohio State bite up and have Air Force go over the top? If that, if and when that happens. I beg your pardon, bite up. Rodney Lewis again, this time the nose tackle is there, Greg Smith. Well, when <laughs> football jargon <laughs> alert. Try and clarify, when I say bite, that means to come up on the fake. Of course. And the defensive backs, once they bite, actually do come up. Go ahead and take care of this. All right, the, the first <laughs> Air Force possession results in a safety that's two points for Ohio State. Then a punt, and then the impressive 74-yard 11-play drive. That led to the lead points in the football game. The two-point conversion failed, and that's where we stand, six to five now. You need to study your nomenclature. Or your nomenclature. <laughs> Perez may be a broken play. First down on the first pass play of the game for Rob Perez to tight end David Mott. Ben, a former quarterback, <laughs> you finally get to analyze a pass play? Well, it, it, it's not picture perfect, but it was a play action pass. Perez on the roll, waits till the last second. Look at the catch. Woo, you don't get a chance. He hasn't gotten a chance to do that very often, but Mott makes a great catch. Ninth reception of the season for Mott and it's first down for the Air Force out of the 38. The road scholar, Chris Howard, for a tough couple of yards out to the 40-yard line. Greg Smith made the stop on the play, and Howard received the Football Foundation $10,000 postgraduate scholarship. First winner of the Vincent DePaul and fellowship scholarship. And take a look at the Air Force play selection in this ball game. Not surprising, they came in not having thrown a touchdown pass and having passed for the season for less than 400 yards. Second down. Cover. 
coverage, and there was a lot of contact. And I'm going to tell you, you want to talk about biting up on a play? They came out on the option. Number 17, Daryl Woods, went down on the stock clock like he was going to block, chopped his feet, and tried to run by the... You'll see him at the top of the screen running out. The droid stops, looks like he's going to run, and throws it up and takes a shot right underneath the chin. But here is the play that Air Force was looking for. The throw at the end, and you can see the jersey being grabbed right there by Vinny Clark. That's actually a very good play because if he does, he's beat. He knows it. Everybody knows it. If he lets the guy run by, they're lining up to kick an extra point. So he smartly grabbed the jersey and said, hey, I'll just take the penalty. First down for Air Force as a result of the penalty. And when you beat that man right there, you've beaten somebody. Second team all Big Ten in, 19, in 1990. Led the Big Ten in interceptions. This guy's a big time player. Penalty story thus far in the ball game. Perez still has the football. Got the pass. Tom leads and dove for another five yards. Six yard gain. You know, Ben, we showed a statistic a moment ago. One pass play, now there have been two is all the Air Force has tried. It's got to be frustrating when you can't stop what a team does if it only does one thing, and that is run the football. And you would think with the size advantage, they would be able to do it. But this right here is why they have it. Second effort, gut, desire, and a willingness to fight you to the end. That's what Air Force has. Second down. Academy. If you'd have told me before the game Air Force was going to come in here and blow open holes like this, watch the trap block, look at the hole. He breaks through and he's into the secondary. He's one cut short of going all the way. The tackle made by Clark and Pellini. But Air Force, like I said, they found their groove. Air Force on first and goal. Chris Howard. Boy, they are just blowing people away up front. And now a late penalty flag thrown. Howard picked up yardage down to the three. Gain of about four yards. I think you're going to have a personal foul on Ohio State. The official sorting things out now. And what this is is frustration on the part of Vinnie Clark. You can see him get patted on the head. He's frustrated. He knows he got beat on the, on the halfback option pass. And these wide receivers, although there's only one, they're all rotating in. They are getting in his face, going after his legs, and they're there every play. You can't get rid of them. Vinnie Clark's not used to players like that. Smaller, he figures he's, he's the big guy. He should be taking care of them. Falcons have been just about unstoppable inside the opponent's 20-yard line coming into this game. They scored on 31 of 34 possessions, including 24 touchdowns. They have not thrown a touchdown pass this season. They are first and goal as a result of the penalty on the two-yard line of Ohio State. Perez denied the end zone. Coleman, a senior defensive lineman, first to the play. Rimmel also, a broken play that almost paid off for the Air Force. Watch as soon as he takes, he's waiting for the fullback to belly through. Fullback went the wrong way. The quarterback barks out signals as he gets up to the line, trying to get everybody to go in the right direction. That time, there was miscommunication, and he still, through effort, almost pulled off a touchdown. Picked up about a yard. Second down, goal to go, Air Force at the Buckeye one. Fisher to Barry react right here. 
He, uh, he saw this over at Radio City just the other night. He says, we'll kick it this time. They tried for a two-point conversion earlier. And Joe Wood's conversion is good. Fisher to Barry and his fired up cadet. They do a push-up, these cadets, for every point scored. 13 to this juncture in the game. The Gridiron Rodeo, part of the week-long Liberty Bowl festivities held at the Shelby Showplace Arena. The rodeo featured some of the nation's finest cowboys. And the Air Force team was there looking on. What rope the bull right here. Tell you what, he doesn't put up much of a fight, does he? Boom, down he goes. They tie him up, much the way Air Force has done thus far tonight. They haven't bombed away at Ohio State. They've basically taken it to him on the ground with the infantry. And, and what a big surprise. <laughs> yeah, right, coming in. <laughs> it, it does, you know, for, for the average fan, though, Ben, when you see a team like Ohio State play a team like the Air Force, the Air Force is almost exclusively running the football. You wonder, why can't they shut off that one facet of the game? But you mentioned also execution has been the key in that wishbone. And this one, another big key, Ohio State hasn't seen the wishbone. They haven't played a wishbone team since 1987. Yo, Wood kicking off to restart the game. Third period of play. Robert Smith from the 15. To the 40, down the sideline. McDonald stays a touchdown. Sensational run back by Robert Smith to the 48-yard line of the Air Force, 37 yards. Robert Smith, only a freshman, made a very heads-up play. After he catches this ball, he doesn't run straight. He runs back to where the kickoff was designed to be returned. He picks up his block. He's just one tackle away from taking it all the way home. Big play for Ohio State. They've got to swing the momentum back in their favor on this drive. Their longest drive offensively, 44 yards, coming in the first half of play. Fry under pressure. Gets the pass away, and it's incomplete. Boy, he was being tied by J.P. Tokish, who had him up high. Matter of fact, Ben Bennett, if that was an NFL play, it would have been in the grass. Absolutely. Air Force just embarked on an impressive 78-yard, 10-play drive. Took 5-12 off the clock. That's the kind of time of possession Fisher DeBerry is looking for on the Air Force sideline. And in addition to putting them up by eight points, it also kept their defense off the field. Look what a fresh defense does for you. Tokish comes in there, fresh legs, gets all over Fry. Not any big surprise, they've both been doing it all night. Three receivers in the game for Ohio State on second down. Fry. Throws it away out of play. Intended for Brian Stabline down the sideline. He was pretty well covered in the short pattern by Eric Faison. Well, Fry trying to give Air Force a little bit of its own medicine. They're trying to fake the short pass and go up top. Fry is screaming because his receiver got held. He said, hey, he's got his hands all over my guy. But it was legal because the pattern was run at five yards. The contact occurred within five yards. There wasn't holding. Ohio State, two of nine on third down conversions, and they face a third and ten. Fry. Great coverage by Carlton McDonald on all Big Ten receiver Bobby Allo. My goodness, and again, Wayne, I can't tell you how impressed I am with the coverage on the outside by Eric Faison and Carl McDonald. These guys are all over two of the best receivers in the country. And they're getting a good rush up front. Now, this time they don't. Fry has plenty of time to throw the football. But watch as they come into your picture. McDonald's right there. Had he not been there, number 40, Eldrick Hill was right on top of him. Fair catch signal made, and the catch completed by Thomas. Penalty marker down. They may not have given him two yards to make that reception. They didn't give him enough room. He has to have two yards between he and the defender covering the play. John Cooper not happy with that call, but that's going to be the case. Five yards, 
non-contact kick catch interference against the kickers. First down. And Wayne, to give you an idea about how things are going for Ohio State, after this point, you'll see him covered. He has to move up to make the catch, which puts him within that two-yard range. They were, you'll see him. He has to take a couple of steps up. Tovar and Clark are right there on top of him. 7.31 to go in the third. Air Force leading by eight. That's Kent Graham, number 11 on the sidelines. He's a backup quarterback for Ohio State. He may see some action if the Buckeyes are unable to get their offense on track. First down for the Air Force. 26-yard line. Academy territory. I bet they run it, we will bet. <laughs> Boy, I like the way you gamble, Ben. <laughs> that is Jason Jones for one yard in the arms of Greg Smith. Big Ten All-Academic Team selection tied for the Big Ten sack lead. And there is Greg Fry on the sideline. A very frustrated Greg Fry. He's frustrated for two reasons. He has thrown the football well this afternoon, but he's frustrated because he hasn't been able to put his team in the right place. And Air Force has covered his receivers like a blanket. Perez, on the other hand, has executed his offense well here tonight. Second down. Jason Jones, the rugged fullback, plowing ahead for about three, maybe four yards. Rich Brimmel, Jim, Mark Pellini, rather, team up on the tackle. And, Wayne, I started to tell you a little something about what was happening right after that, the penalty on the punt to Air Force. Ohio State players were walking off the field with their heads down, and you should have seen Cooper just about jump out of his sweatsuit getting those fellas to hustle off the field. Third down and seven now for Air Force. Boy, they're letting the play clock go down, and now he's going to take a timeout. So a timeout called by Rob Perez. 6-11 left to go in the third. That was strange. He allowed the play clock to go down to one before calling the timeout. But it's not like they're trying to run the clock now. They still got a whole other quarter after this. And oh. It's only an eight-point ball game. Absolutely. Maybe this is a quick kick strategy. What do you think, huh? Maybe. Am I reaching now? <laughs> Some of the best high school basketball players in the country will be performing in the King's Plus. Holiday Classic, the final coming up 1 p.m. Eastern Sunday here on ESPN. There's some great players who have come out of that, uh, Ben Bennett. J.R. Reed played in that. Dennis Scott, Derek Chivas. Jason Kidd, the most talented high school player in the country, will be in that uh, finale. Dennis Scott, boy, is he lighting up the NBA? Woo! He picked up right where he left off in last year's NCAA tournament. It is a third down for Air Force here. They have seven yards to go. Take a look at a uh, comparison of the two teams in terms of passing in this ball game, or I should say in 1990. As you can see, Air Force did very little passing. Ohio State threw for better than 2,000 yards. And when we talked to the offensive coaches at Air Force, they said, you know, we really don't throw the football well. Our receivers haven't run good routes. Our quarterbacks haven't delivered on time. But when you talk to the Ohio State defensive coaches, they said, boy, that pass really scares you because they've had some people open. Third down for the Air Force. Perez. Got the first down. on the stop. This is a wishbone pass in its simplest form. You make the face inside, you try to hold the linebackers inside, which you can see they all do. Then he rolls out and he says to himself, if my receiver's not open, can I pick up the first down? The answer to that one was absolutely yes. They break the ball now, setting up a wing. John Durham on the wing goes in motion. Perez fakes the handoff and got maybe a yard out near the 40-yard line. Ken Coleman, the nose guard, reading on the play for Ohio State. Well, Perez wanted to keep that one. Unfortunately, so did his fullback. That was why there was the, 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 not the clean mesh in the line, why it didn't look like a very polished play. It always has seemed to me that that would be the most difficult play in football. 
is to put a football in your fullback's belly, going full speed, and be able to pull it out cleanly at the last second. And these guys have done it very well today. Second down. Perez. Intercepted by Vinny Clark. To the 30. He's got some room. To the 50. Biggest play of the game thus far for Ohio State. Rob Perez, the quarterback, walking the pass, knocked him out of bounds. Well, the passing game got a little bit too good to Rob Perez here. He's throwing in the coverage. He never gets his weight into the football. Watch how many red jerseys there are here back. One, two, three. The ball was nowhere close to anybody but Vinny Clark. And he is always going to be close to the football when it's up in the air. This guy is a senior co-captain. That's his seventh interception of the season. Like I mentioned earlier, he led the Big Ten in interceptions this season. 38-yard interception return for Vinnie Clark. His seventh interception of the season. Kent Graham at a quarterback. Knocked down nicely. Pass intended for Jeff Graham and Carlton McDonald has come up big defensively in the second half. The cornerback out of Jacksonville, Florida. Take a look at Kent Graham this season. Comes into the ball game. His first pass play is that sideline pattern to Graham. And that ball was right on the money. The one thing Kent Graham didn't take into account was the athletic ability of the cornerback, number three, Carlton McDonald. He made a great break to recover on that because that football was right on the money. Second and 10 now from the 39 of the Air Force. Blitz coming. Robert Smith picks his way. Down to the 35-yard line on a gain of about four. Yates and Faison respond from the secondary down to the sidelines. It's Kevin Guthrie. Kevin? It's awful tough for Kent Graham to come into the ballgame like this in this big situation after he has been expected to come in. But the thing is, you know, it's not really been Fry's fault. The line has been just dominating on the defensive line of scrimmage for Air Force. Tough situation for Graham. they got to throw the ball. Ben Wayne? Absolutely. Kent Graham, a junior out of Wheaton, Illinois. And Ben, I would say he's in the ballgame to try to put a different spin on the offense and get that passing game going, maybe. But it's tough, I would imagine, a tough decision for Cooper and company to take out a fifth-year senior like Greg Fry. Ohio State, penalty markers down now. They've taken too much time in getting to the line of scrimmage and calling this play. And I think as time wound down, Cooper on the sidelines wanted a timeout. Kent Graham didn't see him. Well, that's a little bit of inexperience on his part. That's what happens when you switch QBs. You run into logistical problems, trying to get plays called, people shuffled in and out. Now, to talk about Greg Fry, they pulled him in what will be his last game at Ohio State. He has not had, had a bad day. He's 7 for 16, but the problem that he had was his last six passes in a row have been incomplete. But don't take away anything from Greg Fry because he has just been swamped by blitzes and outstanding outstanding efforts by Air Force's defensive line. Storyline in this evening's ball game. Two touchdowns to the quarterback of Air Force. Air Force uh, chewing it up on the ground, 166 yards rushing. Ohio State just 16 yards on the ground, that powerful ground attack. Williams, 28-yard field goal. The only scoring accomplished by the Ohio State offense. The other two points, of course, coming from a safety. The last time Ohio State converted on a third down, back in the first period of play. They face third down and six. We have four minutes straight up to go in the third. Kent Graham, a transfer out of New York, and out of uh, Notre Dame at quarterback. Outside the 40. Kent Graham gets a heavy dose of what Greg Fry got. Unfortunately, Air Force has committed what I believe is a serious penalty. We've got interference downfield. The question down. is, is it going to be against Air Force or is it going to be offensive pass interference? Flag down back near the 25-yard uh, line. Downfield away from the play, obviously, where the sack occurred. See if Watch we can downfield. Up. You can see the second man in. They're tangled up, and I believe that's going to have to be defensive holding. And what a big mistake. They've got a sack on third down. They're out of field goal range. 
now they've given an automatic first down to Ohio State and field position. Fisher DeBerry, the head coach of the Air Force, pacing anxiously on the sidelines, awaiting the result of the conclave of the officials. And it's going to go against the Air Force, Ben, as you suspected. Thus far, Air Force has made some major, major mistakes, and they've been able, through their true grit, to play through them. This is a situation where this defensive holding is a huge, huge swing because now instead of an eight-yard loss, you're talking about a 15-yard gain and an automatic first down. Coach DeBerry getting the explanation from the official. And it's first down to the 25-yard line of the Air Force for Ohio State. Remember, the Falcons, as well as they've played in this ball game, still only lead by eight points, 13 to five. 3.51 to go in the third. Kent Graham has the strongest arm of the Ohio State quarterback. And he is in the ball game trying to get this offense on track. Graham at the 21. Scotty Graham. Now, Ben Bennett, you got to keep your Graham straight. As you got Jeff Graham downfield, number 84. You have that guy, number 35, Scotty Graham at fullback. And you have Kent Graham at quarterback, and none of them are related. And I don't want to say <laughs> that all these Grahams are going to drive you crackers, because that would really be a bad one to say. This is a tough night for a play-by-play guy where they stick this many Grahams in there. It's kind of like the Smiths, you know? Wait, can you hear that sound? Do you hear violins playing in the background? I don't. <laughs> Second down. At the 21 for the Buckeyes in enemy territory. Robert Smith. Oh, man, I tell you, Brian Hill read it so well. What a big surprise. <laughs> we keep calling this guy's name over and over again. Watch Brian Hill with the penetration. And this is the freshman of the year he's making the tackle on. He is just not going to give up. Yeah, you know, we talked about to the coaches about him when he was a freshman. They said, "Hey, we don't want you. You're too little. You can't play." They finally got him a scholarship. He finally got a place, a chance to play. They still didn't want him. All he's done is become the leading tackle on his team for three years in a row. Third down conversions have been tough for Ohio State. Graham, incomplete. Fourth down, Buckeyes. He was trying to go deep to Jeff Graham, the all-Big Ten receiver. Kent Graham's going to go to the sidelines and say, hey, Greg, I found out what you were going through. On the blitz, look at him coming through. He doesn't get hit in the arm, but he gets hit in the feet, and that causes the football to go down, and it's short hop to his wide receiver. 38-yard field goal attempt. Coming up for Tim Williams. He's 4-4 four of four in this range coming into tonight's game. Eastern, followed by a very important game 
in the Central Division of the AFC. The Pittsburgh Steelers on the road against the Houston Oilers. Oilers without quarterback Warren Moon. Pittsburgh number one defense in the NFL. Second down coming up here for the Air Force. About four yards to go. Perez on a key. Didn't get much. Derek Foster responds, sophomore out of Dayton, Ohio. As I mentioned, playing in place of the talented Alonzo Spellman, who did not make the trip here for disciplinary reasons. And folks, as you watch Air Force carve up this Ohio State defense, realize that they played against Highland Hickson and the pair from Michigan State, two of the top backs, Pico Duckett. They played against John Vaughn and Ricky Powers from Michigan. They played against the best running teams in the country and haven't played this badly against any of them. Time running down in the third. Perez. Formation for the Air Force. Jason Crisp. Graham back deep for Ohio State. Jeff Graham. He can make him miss. But again, this fired up bunch of cadets all over. Jeff Graham didn't allow him much more than about a four to five yard return. Lewis Yeager, who early in the ball game on his first deep snap of his career, put it over the punter's head and into the end zone for a safety. Came up with a tackle right there. Time winds down to this third period of play. The cadets from the Air Force Academy now leading by eight. Falcons standing proud thus far through three periods of play. The Falcons of the Air Force Academy lead the Buckeyes of Ohio State 13 to 5. And think back to the bad snap at the beginning of the game by this man running down the middle of the field, number 48, Lewis Yeager. Watch him miss, but look at the effort. He's on the ground, he's missed the tackle, but look who comes back with second effort and makes the stick. That's not the first tackle he's made tonight on the coverage teams. It's about the third, from what we're told. Well, you'd like to say that he's doing it to try to make up, but that's what this entire Air Force team is made of. First down, Buckeyes. 31-yard line of Ohio State. Dante Lee. Out to the 43-yard line. Eldrick Hill, the free safety on the stop. 12-yard gain to a first down, Buckeyes. Wayne, previous to this run, to give you an idea about how good the Air Force defense has been today, OSU had 24 carries for a total of 20 yards. Dante Lee, the sophomore, has been injured, but he's back. He's practiced well this week. Look at the block out front. Dante Lee puts the ball in the right hand, breaks outside, 12-yard gain. Ohio State's on the move. First down, Kent Graham. McDonald had the coverage and it was glove like. Folks, this is concentration like you may never see it again. Watch at the very end of this play. The ball out of his hands, look at him lay out. And this is a guy that was a former walk on. Ted Graham's reaction. He's a little excited. Back to back big plays for Ohio State. They've got to keep the momentum on their side of the ball. Smith, inside the 30. Boy, they have covered him well. Down to the 29-yard line. Over Hill, Cliff Lovelace on the stop for the Air Force Academy. Going back to that catch, Wayne, number 88, Brian Stabline. The book on him is that he'll catch everything that was thrown to him. Didn't that catch remind you a little bit of another great number 88 making a catch in traffic? Looks like Lynn Swan in the Super Bowl. Sure Got did. hit, falling down, lays out, and makes the grab. What a catch that was. Carlton McDonald got a piece of the football on that play. State line stayed right with it, though, and made the catch. It was all over. Second down and four for the Buckeyes. Graham. Nope. Smith into the clear. Touchdown, Buckeyes! Jordan. You may slow him 
player not to make the big play. Look at the tackles that he breaks. Look at the effort to stay on his feet. And then the move at the end. Cut back up inside. And then the acceleration through Carlton McDonald. 29-yard running play by Ooh. Robert Smith. Biggest run of the night for Ohio State. And the Buckeyes now. Ben, I would think you'd go for two here, don't you? They're calling timeout. They're going for two. Kent Graham asked for timeout. They were, they have the offense in there, Ben, but I don't think they were sure on what play they wanted to call here. And the scary thing is Graham was trying to call timeout, and one of his teammates was grabbing him, trying to stop him. If he doesn't call timeout and the clock expires, they move it back five yards. So instead of first and goal at the three, they got a first and goal at the eight. Ohio State on a four-play, 69-yard drive to get right back into it at the Liberty Bowl. 13.21 to go in the fourth. Ohio State going for a two-point conversion that would tie the ball game if they are successful. And Air Force faced a crucial two-point conversion situation on defense in their final game of the regular season at El Paso. If they held, they'd make it to a ball game. If they gave up the two points, they'd be home for Christmas. They made it. I think they're here. I think what you had to do is you had to give your quarterback a chance to move on the outside. Give him the option to run a pass. They shift. Two-point conversion drive. They're going to run a pick play. Jeff Graham in motion. Ken Graham. Overshot Fabiano. McDonald measured the coverage well. Rod Steffen was coming hard from the backside. And I don't think the quarterback ever saw him. Unbelievable. Ken Graham, through a, through a lack of experience, didn't look who the man he was to the first. Hit 84, the man to your left of your screen, who's wide open in the front corner of the end zone. He instead looks to Bobby Olive and delivers the ball too high for Olive to get to. Even if he'd gotten his hands on the football, he would not have come down in bounds. The play was designed for the flanker, Jeff Graham. They picked, even though they played a zone, nobody covered Graham in the flat. After the ball went sailing over Olive's head, you could see the disgust. Graham was standing in the front corner. He's wide open. Take a look at it, Ben. As he rolls out, his first receiver is Graham. He's not even looking for him. He's looking for Bobby Olive all the way. In the right part of your screen, there's nobody except Jeff Graham just out the right side. Fisher DeBerry knows it. He says, hey, we got one there, folks. Bobby Olive was shaken up on that play. You saw the way he came down flat on his back. And he needs some assistance. Ohio State will kick off to the Air Force. Two-point conversion fails. Falcons still have a two-point lead with 13.21 to go in this 32nd. Liberty Bowl. But Wayne, this is the Ohio State we expected to see from the outset. Where have they been the whole game? Williams kick. Eric Faison. Out across the 25 to the 28-yard line. It'll be first down Air Force. Roger Harper made the stop. Scoring drive set up by the interception. 69 yards and four plays. Robert Smith, 29 yards to the score. 69 yards in four plays. That's the Ohio State that we had talked about in the open. The dominating offensive line, the sharp quarterback, the fantastic running back. That's the first drive they've really showed that they're a Big Ten football team. Jason Jones across the 30 to the 32-yard line, gain of about four yards. And Wayne, the key to remember, that drive was set up by the interception by Vinnie Clark. The interception came after Rob Perez made a terrible decision and an even worse throw. Now Air Force can put the momentum back on their side of the football by driving down, keeping Ohio State's defense on the field, keeping their offense off, and not making mistakes. Second down, about six. Perez. 
Good second effort out near the 40. He has a first down. To the sidelines we go with Kevin Gupton. I'm with Jimmy McDowell, the executive director of the National College Football Foundation Hall of Fame, College Hall of Fame. Jimmy, they're moving the College Hall of Fame down to Memphis from Kings Island. Tell us the reasoning behind that. Well, Kevin, last year the foundation's board accepted a proposal from Memphis to move the Hall of Fame here. Uh, the attendance, unfortunately, at Kings Island for the past 13 years has been very disappointing. And so uh, this is one of the top college football areas in the country. And so the board uh, liked the proposal Memphis offered them, and they voted to accept that proposal to move the, the hall here in 1991. So they'll have it in the big pyramid then, huh? That's the plan to be in the Great American Pyramid. You know, Jimmy's been with the National Football Foundation and College Hall of Fame for 21 years as the executive director. He's retiring after this year. What are your thoughts and feelings now? Well, uh, it's been a good, good run. I've enjoyed it immensely, working with some great people across the country. Uh, but I'm going to get into something else, either serious writing or maybe return to television and newspaper work or get involved with college and professional sports. Thanks for being with us, Jimmy. Kevin, it's good to see you, Kevin. Good luck. Perez on the roll. Andy Kerr meets him in the hole as he made the turn off the right side of the offensive line. Gain of a couple of more yards. It'll leave a third down at about six. Steve Tovar was also there on the stop for Ohio State. Andy Gerd recovered from off-season surgery. He's been beat up. He's been injured. But he wants to play football. And if you want to come back from an injury, you've got to spend countless hours in the weight room and in the training room rehabilitating yourself. Mr. Gerd has done exactly that. It is third down and five now for the Air Force. Early start by the tight end, and the whistles hold up the play. David Mott came off sides and made contact, and at that point, the play was dead. And you have to wonder, how many of these mistakes can they make and still stay in the football game? Watch the bottom of your screen. That's a no-no, folks. And now, instead of third and five, a very makeable situation for Air Force. They're in third and ten. And remember, they do not throw the football well at all. Temperature was around 38 degrees at the start of the game. And it's dipped down into the 35, maybe 32 degree range. Take a look at Greg Fry. Maybe coming back into the ball game. He has a football. And Maybe wishful thinking, too. Well, you also have to think that his experience would have paid off on that two-point conversion. Perez on third down. Catch knocked down by Steve Tobar, the all-Big Ten linebacker. Impressive stand by the Buckeye defense. And the wheels of momentum continue to turn back the other way to Ohio State. A first-team all-Big Ten linebacker and should be a bunch of candidate for the next two years you're about to see why Perez makes a play fake into the line here comes Tovar pursuit on the quarterback was relentless and he was very smart to get his hands up even though he couldn't make the sack he knocked the ball down Jason Chris Hunt Graham takes it and he is leveled on the play once again the deep snapper Lewis Yeager on the hit impressive 10.23 left to go. Fourth period of play of the 32nd annual Liberty Bowl. Falcons by two. ESPN's Bowl Week, the 32nd annual Liberty Bowl Football Classic, brought to you by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. And by Levi's 505, 506, and 540 jeans. Wayne Larravee with Ben Bennett, Kevin Guthrie at the Liberty Bowl. Greg Fry is back in at quarterback for Ohio State. First down, Buckeyes at the Ohio State 32. Fry. Graham trying to come back for it underneath the coverage of Carlton McDonald near the 40. Could not hang on. Ohio State in the fourth quarter. Not score their opponents by 51 points. And matter of fact, overall in the second half, if you compare what Ohio State opponents have made in the second half, 84 points. Ohio State in the fourth period, 97 points in that fourth period alone. So they've outscored in one period. Their opponents total in two. Second down. Ten yards to go. Fry checking off the line. Seven to go on the play clock. He had Graham deep in the McDonald on the interception. Penalty marker down. Tom 
second of the season. Alan Klein forced him out, the quick tackle. This is unbelievable. This is a guy that was rated last year number one in the Big Ten in passing efficiency, 10th overall, and was number four in the Big Ten in passing efficiency this year. On back-to-back -back plays, the first play he had time, and he missed his receiver, Graham, on an easy hook pass. This time, first down. This time, even though he audible to the play he wanted, he had a guy close to him. He had a receiver running open, but he didn't even throw the ball anywhere near the intended receiver. Carl McDonald actually fell off of his receiver to make the interception. Holding the call against the Air Force on the return, so they back it up 10 yards back to the 45 of the Air Force. And what's going through Kit Graham's mind right now? He gets in, he leads them down, they score a touchdown to get back within two, and the next series, he's out. So it is a first down for the Air Force at the 45 off a holding penalty on the return. Dan Zadroit sliding for about four yards, depending on the spot of the ball. Second out of coming to the Air Force, Rich Primmel made the stop. Well, by no means is Ohio State out of this game with 9.53 left and only down by two. But these are the mistakes that you can't make if you're Air Force. Right there, number 81 has got his hands. Lane Bean was behind and had his hand on the back of the jersey right in front of the ref. You can't do that. Perez. Got another first down for the Air Force inside the 40, the 43-yard line. Andy Gerd made the stop back to the sidelines. We go on our Kevin Guthrie. Kevin? You know, Ben, uh, you know, watching that interception from down here on the sideline, it looked like Trey really had, Brian really had the horses to get it out there, almost like he was cold. As a quarterback, Ben, what's that like coming in and out of a ball game that way? Well, coming in and out of a ball game is bad enough, but when you're talking about being cold, add into the fact that it's probably in the high 20s right now, and he's especially cold sitting on the bench. Rodney Lewis is warmed up for Ben Gardner to the Ohio State 24-yard line. Polini and Cook on the stop. A few moments ago, Ben Bennett, the momentum was in favor of Ohio State on the comeback trail, and just like that, it turns in a heartbeat. And this is the bread and butter of the Air Force wishbone offense. Give it to the fullback. If you can stop him, we'll do something else. But right now, they're not stopping him. This is the counter. Backs fake one way, run the other, and the line crosses. Look at the effort there by Rodney Lewis, the 6'1", 212-pound senior. Deshaun Durham inside the 20. Down to about the 17-yard line, depending on the spot of the ball. Foster Falk and Mark Pellini in on the stop. And as you see Durham pull into the line and power his way for extra yards, realize this guy's 5'8", 175 pounds. <laughs> right. And to go back to the interception that Greg Fry threw, we had a shot of him on the sidelines, and if you could read his lips talking on the phone, he says, I had him open, I just threw a bad ball. Second down. About two. Quick call to the halfback and very short yardage. Durham on the carry, Smith on the tackle. Air Force about a yard short of the first down, the 16 of Ohio State. And Wayne, one of the keys to this drive, not only are they holding on to the football and not turning it back over to Ohio State, they're eating up precious seconds off of the clock. Third down. who is just getting blown out. Double team that time. That block there is actually illegal. Once somebody is engaged, you're not allowed to go for their leg. That was an illegal block, but it's not illegal if it doesn't get called. Maurer and Deshaun Durham teamed up on that block. Lewis loses the football. Buckeyes have it. Jimmy Peel on the fumble recovery. First down, Ohio State. Wayne, how many times does that happen? I'm going to get letters by the push 
explodes. As soon as I tell Air Force, yeah, they're hanging on to the football and eating up the clock, not turning it over, what do they do? They have a miscommunication. The fullback didn't even realize that he had the football. That's what I was talking about earlier. It's so tough to make that mesh cleanly. And as soon as I mention it, boy, they put the ball on the ground. Greg Fry back into the lineup at quarterback for Ohio State. Turnovers in the ball game. Air Force has committed three. They've also committed some crucial penalties. Yet they still lead by two with 6.59 to go. First down, Buckeyes at the 12-yard line of Ohio State. Scotty Graham, nothing fancy here. Straight ahead, out to about the 16-yard line on a gain of four. But it may sound premature to say at this point with 6.45 left in the game, but Ohio State, the way they've been moving the football with Greg Bryant at the helm, it's taken them a long time to get anywhere. They've still got, but they got a long way to go. Second down for Fry, six yards to go. Robert Smith, good move. Out across the 20, and it appears he has the first down or is very close to it. And Shannon Yates and Brian Hill came up along with Charles McDonald from the secondary. And Wayne, l l let me follow that up by saying, if you're Ohio State, you've got Robert Smith in the backfield, you're uh, 80 some yards away, you could be back in the lead in less than eight seconds. This guy was a state 100 meter champion as a junior, finished second as a senior. This guy is one big block away from taking the ball home. Greg Bryant comes to the near sideline, talks with John Cooper. The officials bring out the chains. So we talked with uh, Coach Cooper about his confidence in Greg Fry. He feels very strong about this fifth-year senior quarterback who has persevered through some bad times in Columbus, Ohio. Well, I'm proud of Greg Fry. He's had a great career for us. He's going to be second for, in a total offensive leader in the history of Ohio State football. He's going to be the first quarterback in the history of Ohio State to throw for over 2,000 yards in his career uh, three years in a row. Uh, Greg is a very intelligent football player, as, as you mentioned. He, he's a, he won the National Football Foundation Hall of Fame scholarship worth $10,000. He's, he's going to graduate. He's an honest student. And he's had a great career both on and off the football field. John Cooper with his confidence in Greg Fry. That's why they go back to him here in the second half. Robert Smith picks up yardage. I don't know who, about the 24. That's a gain of about two yards. Ben Wayne, I don't know who coined that old phrase, but you dance with the girl that brung you. You know, this is the girl that took you to dance. Greg Fry has been their horse all year. He's a three-year starter. This is a guy that's accounted for over 6,200 yards in total offense. He's a fifth-year senior. You've got to give him his shot. He deserves it. Graham in motion. Jeff Graham. Fry. Going deep. Going for Graham, who was well covered in the pass, overthrown a bit. Yates and Faison to team up on the coverage. Overthrown a bit, but just a very little bit. Now remember, Greg Fry last year against Minnesota led a 33-point comeback. They were getting smoked by Minnesota. He came back and threw for 362 yards and won the game. Earlier this year, they're playing Iowa. He drove them down and threw a touchdown pass to Bobby Olive with one second left after he had scored the previous touchdown. This is a guy that's been in these pressure situations before. Kent Graham has not. Even though he drove the team down, there really wasn't a lot of pressure. If he didn't, if he wasn't successful, hey, the fifth-year senior hadn't been successful first either. Third down for Ohio State. Tough times on third down conversion for the Buckeyes. They've got a third and nine. pass downfield to Bernard Edwards. You're only as good as the other 10 guys that are on the field with you at the same time. That was nothing Greg Fry could do on that play. They came with a three, three people extra on the blitz. They had man covered. Fry had people running open, but he had no time to get the football away. Jeff Bowman, senior Centerville, Ohio. Bobby Thomas back deep for the Air Force to receive this punt. High snap. No rush. And he shanks it. And the Air Force will get the football in Ohio State territory. Deep in Ohio State territory. 
12 yard punt. 457 now left to go as John Cooper goes for the official. Bowman averaged this year 42.5 yards a kick up from last year where he was 40.3. And a high snap, and this uh, certainly affects the way you set up for the kick. Great effort to get the ball down. He knows he's got people coming in. He's got to get it away. But look at the reaction as soon as it comes off his foot. That's a tough position to put him in. You can't blame it on him. The snap was bad. He did, he did well just to make the catch, but he must get it off. Jim Borgers on the snap. Now the Air Force Academy with a golden opportunity. Perez. Oh, they react as if he lost the football, but the play had been whistled dead if, in fact, he did lose the ball. It will belong to the Air Force. Hey, if you're Air Force right now, what you want to do is make sure whoever's got their hands on the football, they've got both of them on it. If you give it to the fullback, give it to him clean. Let him run with it, even if he doesn't gain yards. Even if you don't get a first down here, the clock's running, you get the punt, and you put Ohio State deep in their territory. Don't turn it over. Eat up a lot of the clock. Sometimes that's easier said than done. Second down, about eight yards to go. 34-yard line of Ohio State. Onaha hammered immediately. May have fallen forward for a yard. Greg Smith, the nose tackle. And you see the Ohio State players after being urged by the Ohio State coaches. Get up, get up, get up. They want to get up and get on Air Force off the ground as quickly as possible to keep the precious seconds on the clock. So it is a third down for the Air Force. They lead by two, coming up on 345 left to be played. And if your Air Force, an experienced quarterback, takes the play clock down to two before he snaps the ball. Perez. Short of a first down near the Ohio State 29-yard line. Buckeye stayed with the play. Andy Gerd and Rich Kremel flowed the ball. Gain of four, but not enough for the first down. You like how I got that wireless mic working with Rob Perez? I said a quarter, good quarterback takes it down to two. Guess when he snaps it? Right on two. Right on two. And it's a, it's a very, very intelligent move on his part. Take away all the time you can. Sports Center coming up. NBA highlights. College hoops. Ty Detmer. Feature. Oh, coming up with Tom Meese and Gary Miller at Sports Center next. This will be a 46-yard field goal attempt. The kick by Ward. Ah, it's good. Very significant because now the Buckeyes to win must reach the end zone. Fisher DeBerry called Joe Wood the best kicker in the country, period. Hey, you won't be able to see it on this angle, but watch how the ball slices in just inside the upright. Whew, they don't come a lot closer than that, folks. And watch the reaction. This will tell you all you need to know. Good. This is what they're playing for, the 1990 Liberty Bowl trophy. A handsome award that is. And they may be playing for that trophy, but I promise you there's a lot more on the on at stake for Air Force. They came in here last year, and they got beat up pretty good. They came in here tired, they'd had a long season, they were beat up, and they didn't prepare as well as they would like to have. One of their big goals was to come in here and show everybody they deserve to be here. There is no question that they've done that today. Pop fly kick taken by one of the up backs. Huffman, a tight end, goes down at the hand of Teddy Dornbush and company. And it'll be first down for the Buckeyes. If you're Greg Fry, where are you right now? Well, so far, you're the go to the game. You've gotten pulled, put back in, and thrown a big interception. He's got two minutes and 41 seconds to become the hero. He's the type of player that can do it. He's done it before, and he has that type of heart. He's that type of player. Buckeyes have one timeout remaining from the 29. Fry, play action.
which is what Carlton McDonald does here. The ball was delivered late, high and behind. Carlton McDonald makes his second interception of the game, his fourth of the year, to go along with 36 tackles, two fumble recoveries, three block kicks, and a super performance here tonight. Forty-yard interception return off a Greg Fry pass by Carlton McDonald, a sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. And the cadets have some push-ups to do. Watch Carl McDonald. He never really, never really turns and runs. He breaks up on the ball nicely. The ball is behind. Once he gets his hands on it, he's gone. I tell you, this guy not only letters in football and track, he letters in swimming. He's just a tremendous all-round athlete. And when you can outrun Bobby Allen to the end zone, that's saying something. Why did he go to Air Force? Because he always wanted to fly airplanes. He's going to be a pilot, sophomore, and he has covered here tonight, Ben Bennett, like a senior. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something else. You see the, cal the caliber of player that Carlton McDonald is. He can play in any Division I program. And you hear all these coaches around the country, especially in the Southwest Conference at times and at SMU at these other schools, hey, we can't compete because we can't get the students. Uh, we can't get the players in where we need with the academic requirements. That's hogwash. Look what Fisher DeBerry has done here. Look what some of the players at Stanford, look at the players at Rice, these other teams. They put together programs with student athletes. As you go through this list of Air Force players, just about every one of them has been on the National Honor Society once, twice, three times. They had 14 guys on the academic all-whack team. McDonald's work tonight on the field, two interceptions, three pass breakups, and eight tackles. Joe Wood getting set to restart the game. It is 23 to 11 now. Air Force. A squib kick. It. Dante Lee. The Buckeyes will take over at the 35 yard line. Let's get out of the sideline to Kevin Guthrie. Kevin? Ohio State now, they have to have a miracle in the two minutes drill. They got to do it with the passing game. It looks like they're going to have to do it without Jeff Graham, their All American receiver. He sprained his toe. They told him to evaluate himself, but he couldn't put any weight on it. He wasn't in the last series for the interception. He's going to be less than 50% if he tries to go back in the ballgame. And he did it on the long overthrow from Fry. You yep. saw him get up limping. Three receivers in the ballgame, slot to the top of your screen. the play dead of the 45 yard line. Shannon Yates made the hit 20 yard gain. There's a look at Jeff Graham, the all big 10 all American wide receiver. And if he's not in there, I promise you, he hurts pretty bad. Ohio State, of course, going without a huddle here. 2.15 left to go. Buckeyes have one timeout remaining. They trail by 12 points. coming up here against Ohio State. I need to 
Oh, that was really, it really hurts him. It was offensive holding on the catch. Instead of a first down, down inside the 20. Look at the field position they have now. Boy, that one really, really hurts him. First down and 20. Back of the 44. to run a free play against the free bet defense. You're going to get people out in front of you, but it takes so long to develop that a lot of bodies on the defense can get around the football. Second down and 20 coming up for Ohio State. Minute 57 left to go. But the place that Greg Fry has to pick is on the outside where he's been shooting, and he's got to take some shots across the middle. Premature movement by the offensive tackle, Alan Klein. And Ohio State creating problems for itself with penalties at a crucial stage. Alan, Alan Klein has been characterized by the coaching staff here as a lineman, only a freshman at 6'7", 280, who could be one of the best ever at Ohio State. And that's saying something. Unfortunately, he didn't show that there. Minute 57 left to go. This is called second and forever. Second and 25 to be specific. Forever wasn't accurate enough. <laughs> Fly. Pass deflected and nearly picked off downfield. Rod Steffen was coming hard on the rush. And he may have gotten a piece of the football. It was almost picked off downfield. Same thing that's been happening to Fry all night long. The stunts up inside, they don't get to it this time, but they get close enough and they get their hands in the air. You can see the pass right there, almost intercepted. That was Bill Price downfield. Richard Berry on the sideline. Greg Fry now facing a third down at 25 from the 49 with a bit of 50 to go. of Eric Bazon and his fourth down coming up for Ohio State. You know, there was a lot of discussion this week that people down here weren't happy that uh, Bud Dudley had made an arrangement with the uh, Air Force Academy, with the academies that the uh, commander, winner of the Commander-in-Chief's Trophy, the series between Air Force, Navy, and Army, would get an automatic berth in the Liberty Bowl if they had a regular season record of 500, or a regular season winning record. Now, here tonight, look what's happened. The Air Force Academy's come in out of the whack of the 6-5 record, and they've got the lead and are in control over a Big Ten team. Fry, deflected, intercepted. Robert Smith, the intended receiver, deflected it. Shannon Yates on the pick, and that basically sums up what's happened to Ohio State here tonight. Had Smith been able to hang on to that football, he would have been able to pick up the first down yard and hit him right in the chest. You can't fault Fry with that when he hit him right on the numbers. Watch to the right of your screen, number 32. You'll see him come cut back across the screen right there. He's running free. The ball right on the number. Oh. Now watch Greg Fry's reaction. This may be the last pass of his college career. Well, Minute 36 to go. Ohio State has one timeout remaining. And that's, that, that's not poetic justice. You don't want to see a player that's had the type of career that Greg Fry's had. You don't want to see it go out with that being his last play. And they're going to try to kill the clock. Perez takes the football back. Drops the one day quickly. Take a look at Fry's stats. He's a fine young man, and he's been a tremendous quarterback for Ohio State. You know, my point being, a lot of people around Memphis said that, hey, the service academies can't play with the kind of caliber teams we want to bring in here out of the Big Ten and the SEC and some of the other big conferences and maybe the Pac-10. But what has happened here tonight shows that, hey, on a given night, the service academy can rise up and make the play. And that's what's happened here tonight. It shows you what heart and desire can do for anybody. Perez going to try to kill the clock again. Under a minute to go. We'd like to thank the executive director of the Liberty Bowl, Bud Dudley and his staff. They made us feel 
very much at home here in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, President Ed Duke of the Liberty Bowl and Vice President Bill McElroy from Ohio State Athletic Director Jim Jones, Sports Information Director Steve Schnapp, Coach John Cooper and his staff. They have always done a fine job. They're good friends, great people, and they have an outstanding program that went through a very trying experience here tonight. Ken from Air Force, the Athletic Director Colonel John Clune, Sports Information Director Dave Kellogg and his staff, and Coach Fisher DeBerry and their staff. And we were so impressed with Fisher DeBerry and his people and, and how they uh, treated this game and, and uh, got their team ready to play here tonight. And the big thing I'd like to emphasize is that Fisher DeBerry has done it with the pure suit athletes. These are guys that go to class. These are guys that graduate, and these are guys that play football. The Air Force Academy has pulled off the upset, coming in a 17-point underdog. They have taken Ohio State 23 to 11. John Cooper and Fisher DeBerry, they are good friends. Yes, they are. They both respect each other very much. To follow up what I was saying, I live in Dallas now, and I, I listen to the stories going on about them trying to hire a new football coach for the SMU football program. Kenneth Pye, who was a former president of Duke University, went in there and said, we are going to have student athletes, very similar to what the academy has. There were several coaches who said, hey, I don't want that job because I can't get the player in there. I need to compete. All that says to me is that there aren't there are coaches out there that don't want to work as hard as Fisher to Barry has. The Ohio State Buckeyes head off and awaiting the ceremony to follow the Liberty Bowl. The Air Force Academy. And, and now you're on to Kevin Guthrie. Got coach to Barry. Kevin? I'm with the victorious coach, Coach DeBerry. Coach, unbelievable win. You know, you said you weren't satisfied with the one-point lead. You came out with a win. Well, we had so many opportunities, really, to put it away, and we thwarted them, but I'm so proud of our kids, and I tell you, I, I think this might be one of the greatest wins we've ever had in the history of the Air Force Academy. You know, this football team was picked seventh in the league this year. We lost 17 starters from last year, but a motto at the beginning of the year is whatever it takes, just do it. They did what it took to get back here, and I'm so doggone proud of them. Well, the game was dedicated to the forces in the Persian Gulf, and in a way, that's a lot of pressure for the kids. You know, they're representing the whole academy, all the armed forces overseas. Do you feel like that played a factor at all for them? Well, we certainly told them before the ball game, as we always do, we pray for our men and women over there, and we just play that there will not be any bloodshed, no shot. And certainly, we're proud and uh, for the fighting spirit and, and, the, and the preparedness and the attitude that they have of being over there. And I certainly wanted them to be very, very proud of our fighting spirit tonight. And I hope they are. Super win, Fisher. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I tell you what, you pack up a tape of this, send it over to Iraq, I guarantee you there won't be any problems. Again, the Falcons win it 23 to 11 over the Ohio State Buckeyes, the 32nd annual Liberty Bowl for Memphis, Tennessee. For Ben Bennett, Kevin Guthrie, this is Wayne Larrabee.